Hey guys, Pixie John here. Uh, we woke up this morning about 47 degrees, a little chilly here in Florida, and we wasn't getting any heat from uh, our uh, Linux uh, heat pump here. So uh, I don't have any gauges to see if uh, the Freon's good or not, but I don't see any leaks around the unit. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm hoping the capacitor or the circuit board is bad. So that's what I'm going to look Hey guys, Fix It John here. Before you go working on the air conditioner, you want to turn off the uh, AC at the uh, breaker. And that's number 30 here. Uh, and then you'll want to follow this uh, electrical line that comes out of your AC uh, unit. And follow that all the way to your disconnect box. You don't want to do any work on this unit until uh, you pull this uh, disconnect. Just pull that uh, electrical disconnect out, and that's all it is. And some of them are a little shaped a little different, but uh, make sure that comes out just in case you're working on the unit and uh, somebody hits the breaker. So yeah, all I can test, all I can look at is uh, circuit boards and uh, capacitors. The compressor isn't kicking on, the fan's running, so we haven't had any issues up till now, so I don't see any leaks, any oil, typically you, you might see oil or something uh, leaking from the unit if uh, you have low pressure. And that would be right right here at the uh, where they uh, welded it together or inside on the uh, evaporator. I'm looking for broken wires and uh, just taking this cover off to see what I can see. Alright guys, on the back of these panels here, these AC panels, there is uh, a system separate, uh, system uh, operation monitor diagnostic sticker and also a uh, defrost control board diagnostic uh, sticker here. So it th this is not going to give you the professional uh, diagnostic, but it could uh, lead you in the path of fixing it yourself. So like the, uh, let's see here. This is what we have here. I mean, just read it. Uh, green power on module has power. So, and, and we have power there. So that's, uh, we, we know we're not lacking any power. And like over here on the uh, defrost board, uh, it says uh, DS2 green, DS1 red, off, off, power problem. No power to no power to 24 volt no power 24 volt uh, to board terminals R and C or board failure and they're they're talking about this board right here the defrost board I checked the low low voltage and everything seems to be working out okay there uh, right here it says. Uh, Alternating slow flash, five minutes anti-short cycle delay. Simo simultaneous slow flash, normal operation. Unit operation normally or in standby mode. Such uh, solution none required. And th and they're they're talking about this uh, board right here. The defrost board. See the red and green flashing simultaneously. That, that that's a good indica uh, that's a good indication uh, that you're getting power your uh, defrost board's working fine and uh, so if you would have like uh, alternating uh, fast flash coil sensor problem sensor being detected open or shorted or out of temperature range board will not perform demand on time temperature defrost operation so these are some things that you can look at. You can look for the, uh, if the, if you're getting that issue, look at the sensor, test that, see if it's bad. 
uh, before you go calling out an AC guy. Only if you feel comfortable doing so. Uh, here's the fault codes that you would get a slow flash uh, on, low pressure lockout, and so on. So that, that, that'll lead you to uh, issues that you may be able to fix yourself. This is the capacitor here, guys, right here, and I'm looking, uh, it's just like a capacitor you'd find in a, uh, a radio or something like that, but it just holds a lot more power. And it looks like the top is bulging on it. The first thing I see is the top's bulging on it. We'll test that. All right, guys, fix it, John, here. I'm going to this... disconnect this, uh capacitor because I think that's what it is and we'll take it to the bench now I have a uh, some gloves on and uh, also some insulated uh, pliers here so I don't get shocked a lot of volts coming out of here and it could hold volts for uh, quite a bit uh oh there's one and there's two Okay, I don't want to lose that. And we'll just take one bolt off here. All right, let's take it to the bench and uh, discharge it. And... All right, guys, I hope you can see this. But uh, before you go handling it, you want to discharge it because, like I said, it does hold electric. I'm going to discharge this with a screwdriver. Let me get an old junk screwdriver. That's one of my better screwdrivers. So, same deal. It's insulated. And you want to take... Uh, Watch very closely. If it has any power, it, 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 it may spark. So I'm going to touch the common to the herm. No, no power in it at all. So now I'm going to try to discharge the fan. Touching the common. Not all there either. So that's, uh, that's a good sign that uh, it, it is a bad capacitor. We'll throw the uh, multimeter on it and see what we have. And when you use the multimeter, you'll want to turn it down here and have that little di uh, little mark right there to read uh, microfarads. So let's see what she'll do. I had a stand for this thing. Let's see. There it is. All right, we're going. To so and when you replace a uh, capacitor, you want to make sure uh, it has uh, the same capacitance as the one you're taking off and the same. Uh, uh, voltage. Uh, you, you don't want to go, if it calls for 440 uh, volts AC, you don't want to go uh, lower than that. So we didn't get a reading at all out of this uh, capacitor and uh, like I said, this is a run capacitor. Uh, this is not the startup. This is what keeps the uh, uh, compressor running and the fan if it was hooked up to this. But this one, uh, this particular model, it Someone must have put this in uh, because there was no fan hooked up to it. Uh, uh, it obviously has another capacitor to run the fan on another part of the air conditioner. So this tells me this has been replaced once before. Hey YouTubers, Fix It John here. Uh, here's the, uh, the new capacitor I just picked up today. And I got that at uh, Granger for... Uh, 5150 tax and everything out the door 5511 uh, I could have gotten it uh, on Amazon for like 27 bucks but uh, it was several days out uh, couldn't have got it until after Christmas and uh, it's getting cold here it's like 67 degrees so it's below freezing here in uh, Florida uh, anyway Here's what you want to look for. Uh, if you don't have a multimeter... Now, th they're not the same height, but that doesn't matter as long as they have the same uh, microfarads and uh, volts. 440, this is a 440 to 370, so I can use it. So here's something you want to look for if you have a, a bad... Uh, see how that uh, capacitor wobbles? Because the bottom, you can't tell it with the naked eye hardly, but the bottom... It's not round. It's not flat. It's round. See how it'll wobble a little bit? Just ever so slightly. See there? This one here, if you hit it, it stops. I mean, uh, uh, there. It stops flat. So, 
and it has that it has a flat bottom this one here won't wobble that one there will wobble just barely touch it and it wobbles that's how you can tell you have a bad capacitor or one going bad in this case this is completely shot this one here no wobble at the top really can't tell it but it's it's uh, bowed up it's bulging up a little bit and this is uh, just a jumbo cap capacitor this is a run capacitor and it continual, continually uh, gives the electric to the uh, specific amounts of electric to the uh, compressor. See how flat that is? Flat on the bottom. So that's one way to tell if you have a uh, bad capacitor, one going bad. Now you could have a perfectly flat capacitor, top and bottom. And it could it can be bad too. You just you just don't know until you would get your uh, multimeter on it. Here's the old capacitor, and in this terminal uh, it says C, which C means uh, common wire, not compressor. And it'll be written out on uh, uh, this one here, fan. And I just wrote it on there so you could see. And this uh, terminal here will say uh, Herm. And that means uh, Hermetic uh, Compressor. This this is the one that goes to the compressor to power it up. Uh, same thing with this new, uh, new capacitor. And all Hermetic means is uh, just a sealed uh, compressor. So let's get the uh, multimeter on it. And uh, let's change the range here. Uh, we're at uh, DC volts. You want to turn your dial down here to uh, read uh, microfarads. So I'll try to keep my hands out of the way. Let's change the dial here to microfarads. This one should read 80 microfarads. Uh, plus or minus six percent. So we're going to put the black on the common, red on the Herm, and sometimes it takes a minute. And we'll hold it there. And nothing. Mark the uh, multimeter's working. Let's do common, common here. Go to the fans. And still nothing. So, this one obviously has no reading at all. It, it can't put out any power or uh, retain, hold any power. So, this one is a bad capacitor. Here's the new one. It's a Titan Pro from uh, Granger. Uh, like I said, I could have gotten it cheaper. Uh, a friend of mine could have gotten it uh, half, half that price uh, at a uh, AC uh, wholesaler. But I can't buy wholesale so uh, with the AC because I don't hold a license, but I can repair my own AC unit. So let's go black on the common and red on the hermetic and we get uh, 79.6 microfarads. So anything uh, within 5% of uh, the 80 is within range. Let's go over to uh, black on the common, keep my hands out of the way, and red on the fan. And there we're getting 7.49. That's well within range also of uh, 7.5 and uh, each each uh, distributor uh, manufacturer they can uh, have different values on their uh, discrepancies like uh, this Titan Pro it allows for 5% uh, plus or minus your uh, total value and this one allows for uh, plus or minus 6% so if it's uh, below the 6% or below the 5%, it may be a bad capacitor. Uh, I don't know why they do that, uh, but they just do. So 
Uh, that's something to keep in mind. It, it's it's you know just different capacitors. Uh, some of them allow for like in transistor radios and stuff. Some of them allow uh, up to ten percent uh, discrepancy. So I can't stress on you enough. If you're not confident with doing the job, hire a professional. Uh, this is something uh, the uh, DIY guy can do. Generally, these uh, run capacitors will discharge themselves with the uh, motor running, but uh, I wouldn't rely on that. It should be discharged, but I, I would do it again a second time to be sure that uh, it's completely discharged. That is uh, one way to do it. It's not the proper way to do it because you uh, can damage your capacitor doing it that way. Uh, you can uh, take a uh, two wires with, uh, I think... Uh, a uh, certain size resistor, join them together and attach it on from the common to the her hermetic uh, terminal and it will uh, discharge it safely. So I don't line it uh, from Granger, so. Uh, you can do that. Uh, I wasn't too worried about this one when I tried to discharge it because it was old and uh, rounded. I knew it needed to be replaced anyway and there was no spark from it, so. That's one way to do it. I, I really, it's probably not going to hurt it, but uh, you, you're taking a chance that it could damage it. I'm just going to leave it open so I can hear that compressor run. First thing I like to do is make sure the uh, circuit breaker's off for the AC. And number 30, that's off. So we'll go out here to the uh, service uh, disconnect box. and reinstall our uh, service disconnect. All right, back over here to the breaker. There's our thermostat, we wanna turn the heat on. That's what we were lacking the other day. Heat's on. Let's turn it up, make sure it comes on. It's 70 degrees in here. That should to 90, 90 degrees, that should kick it on. Scout sign says the compressor's running. Okay, the fan's already on. And yes, the compressor is running. I don't know if you could hear that last time. Uh, we weren't getting a hum at all. Uh, you could hear the fan running. But the compressor was not humming, so. And it's on heat, so what it'll do is uh, take the cold air out of the house and uh, take the heat from out here and put it in the house. So yeah, compressor running good. We'll have heat tonight. So remember, this is Fix It John. If this AC repair uh, video helped you in any way, uh, like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.